I'm going to re I'm going to retake that role for the approval of the agenda. Okay. Thank you. No, student yeah. Trustee Hogan. Here. Tr student Trustee Latino. Here. Trustee Withrow. Yes. Trustee Johannes. Yes. Trustee Gonzalez Ewan. Yes. Trustee Napoli Belarus. Yes. Trustee Quinlan. Here. Trustee Delphine Pope. Yes. Motion passes. Okay, let's yep. move to uh, public communication. Do we have any speaker cards for today? Give me just one moment, I will go check. We have no public comment on non-agenda items at this moment. Okay, great. Um, let's go ahead and move to our action. Consider approval of provisional appointment for trustee area two. And then today um, we have asked Dr. Helen Benjamin to join us to facilitate. So I'll go ahead and if Helen, you're ready, let's go ahead. And yes, I am. Good afternoon, everybody. It's good to see you um, always. And so today we have a little issue we need to get resolved. So I have put together a process and um, we're gonna walk through it. I have slides. It should take us 30 minutes to get this done. So as soon as um, Sasha gets the slides to show up, we'll get started if it's okay with everybody. Let's go ahead and do it. All righty. So give her a minute because I just sent it to her. While we're waiting for, um, excuse me, President. Oh, go ahead, Chancellor, thank you. I'm sorry, I just, it's been a long day for me. My uh, first day kind of back on the job after having a little bit of a illness last week. Um, I just want to say, uh, I want to extend a thank you to uh, Dr. Benjamin on such a short notice for being able to join us and help us through this very difficult process. Um, we are optimistic um, based upon my discussions with her and with the board president um, that we'll be able to get through this today. Uh, we have a deadline looming uh, March the 10th. Um, and so it, it's really imperative that we move forward um, with the board's approval of a candidate to take on the provisional appointment until November. Really election would take place November of next year, but the actual um, seating of the trustee, new trustee would take place on December at our regular meeting that we have at the end of the year. So um, with that, thank you board members. I know this has been a trying time, a difficult decision and hopefully uh, Dr. Benjamin and her time of working with us in the past uh, will bring to bear and we will move forward um, collectively together um, for this next year, which is really important as we transition to a new chancellor. So I'll okay. turn it back over to you and Dr. Benjamin. Okay, thank you. I, I don't see, is Natasha here yet? Because we're going to need her. Okay, so here is the, the PowerPoint we're going to walk through. I just titled it Selection and Replacement Trustee. It's a, the provisional appointment. I didn't quite get the language right. And would you go to the next slide, please? So here, here are the steps. So our um, board chair will give us the desired outcome. I have ground rules for participation. I will review the options that I think are available to you. Uh, Natasha and I and um, Trustee Delph and Polk talked about these today. And I'll see when we get to this slide, whether you have other options you'd like to add. And then how the draw works, because that's one of the um, options, how the draw method works. And then you'll select an, an option and, and execute the option. So um, it's that simple from my point of view. And I did watch your, uh, 
I was up four o'clock this morning watching your meeting last week. I get up early anyway, but I watched watched your meeting that you had on, I think it was Friday. So I have some sense of the discussions you've been having. And I do realize that this is a very uh, challenging uh, situation for all of you, but I know you can get through this. So let's go to the next slide, please. We'll go through the ground rules. And as I walk through these, oh, we'll have the desired outcome from the board chair. So trustee, uh, Sure. Well, we can go, let's go ahead and go through the ground rules. I don't mind doing that. I think that you and the chancellor have already eloquently put what our desired okay. are for today. So I'm happy with that. Okay. So you've seen these before, but I added two new ones, especially for today. Listen as an ally, listen and engage. See this as an opportunity to learn and plan effectively for the district. You, you've, you've got experience in that. You know how to do that. Uh, this is something I really want you to pay attention to tonight because as I this afternoon, because as I watched you today, I had a feeling this wasn't exactly happening. The recognition, uh, the recognizing and respecting that each of you is in a different place and you have a right to your own opinion and perspectives. And you guys, anyway, I'll just stop right there, but you know this. So look for opportunities in the conversations we have, which won't be that many, I don't think, where you can join the other person and not judge the other person. Every person has a right to his or her opinion. You can be curious and ask polite questions, but just don't judge the person. Everybody comes here with something different. And you guys know each other well enough to know what you think you do, know what's in the mind of the other person. That's kind of funny to watch. And then this fourth one is new. I would not like for you to rehash comments that have already been made in previous meetings or in this one. I think you're probably talked out on this. So is there any objection to that particular one? No objection. All right, and then the last one, and I know you know how to do this as well, make sure your position, whatever position you have, and it's your right to have it, is in the best interest of, of this district, of its students, employees, communities, the image of the district and its reputation. Are there any objections to any of these five? Are there any rules you'd like to add? And I did misspell grounds up there. I see it now. And Natasha, I mean, um, Sasha can fix it. Any objections to these? You, you'll abide by these? Okay. Yep. So now let's go to the next slide. So these are the options that your board chair, your attorney, and I came up with. And we can add if you think there are other options. Take a vote on the top two to see if any positions have changed. No discussion. I think you've discussed it enough. Uh, I'll ask for a nomination from the third and fourth candidates because that's that's come up. That's an option that you have. And the third option is to select by draw. And that's the order in which we'll take these things. Does anyone have any other recommendation as to an option. Trustee Johannes? Just a question. You said this is the order in which we'll take it? Um, yes. I guess in my mind, I was thinking the draw would come before a third and fourth. I'm not sure if everyone else felt that would do that. I'm open. Um, I have a suggestion. I, Go ahead, uh, maybe, student, may, Trustee Logan. Maybe the two um, advisory vote, votes for the students can be combined as one to make one vote. That's appropriate. Let's, can you ask that again? That might be a question for legal. Um, maybe the two advisory votes for the student trustees can be counted as one vote in just this one situation. Maybe that can be an option. I think that's a violation of the Ed Code. I don't know if to, so Natasha's on here. An advisory vote is an advisory vote. Correct. The we we're not legally able to make an advisory vote into a voting vote if, that, if I'm understanding the trustees question correctly. And please, please help me understand if I'm not. No, I was just saying in this one situation, since we're going to a draw. I mean, no. Yeah, and 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 even the draw, the draw is simply a criteria for a vote. It does not change the fact that there will be a formal majority vote. Okay. So we have a question about the order. Uh, that's up for discussion now. If you want to make the second option, the third that we entertain, but if you select by draw, then it's done. I mean, 
Yeah, I think only because last in our last meeting, um, everyone agreed that we were happy with the top two. If we were to get our second selection or second uh, choice, then we'd be happy with that as well, apart, uh, as opposed to going to third and fourth. Yeah. Which is why I'm thinking the draw would come before that. So do we want to move the order in which we do this then? Okay. So it sounds as though that the, that the, that that second bullet is not an option. Go ahead, VP Quillen. Yeah. I agree, Dr. Benjamin. If we go to the draw, that's the end. I mean, that's the Which end is, of the uh, um, discussion on who who we're going to support. There's no no yes. reason to look at third and fourth, unless somehow the piece of paper comes out torn in half. <laughs> so, are all of you in favor of removing the second option listed there? Yep. Yes. Go ahead and put your thumbs up. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Yes, we have thumbs up. All right. Okay. So. Are there any other options anyone would like to add? President Delphine Polk. Go ahead, Trustee Gonzalez, you want? Well, rather than even bothering with the first option, I would simply ask, has anybody's position changed? And if not, let's just go to the draw. I, I, I see no point in kind of it won't take but a minute. It's the same thing. All right. That's that's what I'm going to ask you. Yeah, so let's go ahead and go with Dr. Yeah. Benjamin's recommendation. Thank you. Okay. So we, we have two. Are there any other options you'd like to add? I don't want you to come back after we finish and say I have another option because it'll be too late. So okay. uh, just for the on? record, Sasha, would you remove the second option so we can see what the two options are? And then we have a question from VP Quinlan. Go ahead. So just to make sure we need four votes to confirm uh, a candidate for the, not a candidate, but a selection for the position, right? We got three, three to two doesn't get it done. We need four votes. You need Absolutely. four. So am I, let me see a point of clarification. Sure, um, go ahead, Chancellor. So if, to go back to um, Vice President Quinlan's question, a majority of the votes means four, but the, I think what you were asking is if someone abstains or two people abstain, and then that changes what the majority is, or does it not change what the majority is? My understanding is the majority of the quorum, a majority of, so the quorum is what's necessary. I, I just would like for legal to weigh in on that. You must have four affirmative votes. Thank you very much. I, I just want to make sure that that's clear. That's my understanding, but just to get it all out there on the table. President Delphine Polk, point of information. Sure, go ahead. So I don't know whether legal plans to clarify this again, but my understanding is that this second option here, the draw is predicated on an agreement among the board. Oh, we're going to get to that. That's okay. the next part. You, you, you have to remember my, my little my little process agenda there. Thank you. So I want what I'm trying to clarify now. We know how many votes, but uh, the attorney is going to explain all of that. Are there any other options than these two? Okay, then we'll go to the next slide, please. So. Uh, Natasha is going to explain to us, go back, go back one, how the draw works. So listen carefully. Thank you, Dr. Benjamin. Um, trustees, if you decide to use a random lot, a draw as a criterion for your selection, the way it would work is that you would agree to go to, to do, to use a random method. That random method would then occur the draw, drawing the name from a hat or whatever the process be. And then the board must affirm their decision by a majority vote. Because a draw cannot make the determination. Only a vote of the board, a majority vote of the board can make the determination. So I have a- Trustee uh, Johannes, go ahead. I have a, a question. So in essence, we could easily just 
come again come to a deadlock. So I wonder if there's something of the sort where I know this also sounds uh, sort of not to say silly, but in the realm of random, but two out of three, and we all just agree at the end. <laughs> if we need four votes. No, no, no. You need four votes. Let's, Let's not name two out of three times. Confuse this even we... more. You're gonna vote one time. If if that happens in the end, it gets nothing. You you go out for an election. VP yeah. Quinlan. So I think Trustee Johannes. Yeah. I think Trustee Johannes is asking for two out of three draws. Yeah, not two out of three votes. Right. So after two out of three yeah. draws, we just say, "Hey, we're just going to go with that for that name." Trustee Reese. I I just urge my colleagues, and obviously, um, where you are is where you are, and and I'm glad that we're having the discussion. But let's not complicate things um, in a way. It's 50-50 in terms of 3-3, three, three, right? And what we're trying to do is we're trying to move us from a stalemate of 3-3 three, three to something that I think we all agreed on, which is we'll be able to work with whoever is there. But we're, we're kind of complicating this by adding one best out of three or such. So I kind of hear where Natasha, her last statement for me resonates, where is, or was it Dr. Benjamin? You, we choose the method, we do one time, whoever out of that 50-50 probability, one or the other, ends up becoming the person that we vote on and move forward. Thank you, Trustee Reese. And then I'm gonna go ahead and let Natasha finish the presentation and explanation, and then we could open it up for questions, okay? Thank you. Sure. Thank you, thank, thank you, President. Um, so just to provide the board with the rest of the context, the the random lot is not a preferred method for making decisions by any board, and that's why it cannot be the base. That it cannot be the decision itself. It has to be a decision. It can be a criteria that you use to ultimately make your decision. But nothing alleviates the obligation of the board to take an affirmative vote and decide this by majority. President Polk, were there any other? Was there anything else you needed me to address regarding this method? Did you want to discuss best practices or other practices? Um, I can't think of other practices other than for you all to. Well, other agree. examples rather. Yeah. So in terms of there, the other boards have been in this position and they have been criticized for using um, a, a, a coin toss or a random lot, right? Because your board policies and public policy and good decision-making requires that you engage in thoughtful deliberation and, and then come to good decisions. Random, random lot isn't specifically identified in this section of the education code. It is identified in al alternate sections. In section 5016, which is a tie vote through an election process, boards are allowed to adopt a process that would include a random lot selection. And then there wouldn't be the need for an affirmative vote because the process itself allows for the random lot. But it requires certain public policy things like deciding in advance that that's a method you'd use. That's something we haven't done here. Right. And, and so there have been boards that have been criticized in 2015. Morgan Hill Unified did this method, attempted this method, and then decided to decide by a majority vote instead, or, or actually went out to a costly election. In 2007, Berryessa Unified or Berryessa Elementary School District also used this a similar method and then went ahead and did it, but, but we did receive a lot of criticism because the idea of going to this, to something like this does mean that the board has failed to be able to deliberate through something through the process, which is your obligation in 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 being able to determine, you know, a, a conclusion. Um, but it is still an option that you have as long as it is ultimately supported by an affirmative majority vote. President Gulfin Polk, was there anything else that you wanted me to speak to? I don't think so. Let's go ahead and open it up to questions. I see Trustee Withrow, you're recognized. Basic question. I hear the uh, legal ramifications and it doesn't surprise me that um, there's some involved in that. But in this case, why couldn't we have a move to adopt a resolution 
the addresses the results of a coin toss, whereby those that voted in for, favor of the resolution automatically convey their uh, vote, automatically convey their vote to be consistent with the winner of the coin toss. Because that's not what you decided you wanted to do the other night is my answer. I'm jumping in here probably inappropriately, but we, we can't change it in the middle now. I'm not sure I, could you run that by me again? Could you, uh, Natasha, could you speak to that? The, the re, the, I'm not, if I understood Tristy Withrow's question correctly, I think what he's asking is, can we in advance decide that we as a board will affirm the decision of the coin toss so that you don't have to take that final affirmative vote? And the answer to that would be no. You must conclude this conversation through a motion and vote that, that makes clear who the appointee is. It can't say we're going to vote to do a coin to do a, a random lot, and then the random lot will determine it. It must be that we are looking to a random lot to, to support our criteria for our for the vote that we are going to take. It cannot be in the alternate order. Okay, thank you. VP Quinlan. Well, I'll go this far, Trustee. Um... I will commit to following whatever the random decision uh, is comes, you know, whatever the random decision is, I will support that decision. I will too. I will three. I will as well support the decision. Me too, thank you. Okay. Um, Be mindful that I'm also in attendance. Sorry, I can't see the screen, so. <laughs> So Sasha, just let us know whenever Trustee Gonzalez Yuen has his hand up. I, I apologize, Trustee. I don't, I can't see it. Uh, all right. Just wanted to say, yeah, I'll, I'll go along with this. This board at this point just needs a little bit of injection of trust with each other. Let's try to be just trusting that we're going to get this right. Yes. Oh, that's wonderful. Whatever, however it comes out. Okay. So we're down to, um, the draw. Natasha. Else, I want to make sure that we have we leave room for any questions about the process if we have any additional questions. So you want to go through it one more time? I mean, just tell how it's going to work. Now you're gonna you've got two pieces of paper, or how's it working, Natasha? Yeah, you could include the names on a piece of paper and have those drawn out of a bowl or a vessel. So Dr. Jackson, would you put the names on a piece of paper, fold them, and if we have a bowl, and then you can have someone, someone to draw? So I wanna be clear that this is what we're doing, right? Are we, a, we're, I just- So we, we've also decided to not do the vote once again. That's what I- Number one and right number now, two. I was- Oh, the, I'm sorry, let me see the next slide. I forgot I, my yeah. own process. You can get me for that, Nick. I just wanna make sure that we're clear <laughs> at what we're next doing slide, please. we go to this option. While uh, Jeanette's getting that ready, the draw ready. Next slide, please. So we vote on top two to see if positions have changed. It's in your hands, Madam Chair. Okay, I'm entertaining a motion. BP Quinlan. Uh, I would like to nominate Paulina uh, Gonzalez Brito for the second area uh, district uh, trustee position. Second. Second. Roll call. Student trustee Hogan? No. Student trustee Latino? No. Trustee Withrow? No. Trustee Johannes? No. No. <clears throat> trustee Gonzalez Ewan? Please return to me. I'm sorry? Please return to me. Oh, return to you. Yes, sir. Trustee Napoli Belarese? Yes. Yes. Trustee Quinlan? Yes. Trustee Delphine Polk? No. Trustee Gonzalez Ewan? 
abstain. Motion fails. Okay. okay, so so now we go to the vote. Are we ready uh, in the boardroom? Yes. VP Quillen? So, so once again, I want to be clear that this is going to a draw, correct? And that everybody is okay with I know how I feel. I've already expressed my feelings about this. I'm Dr. just, Jackson. yeah. Actually, it seems to be the only way to get it resolved. Hold on a second, Dr. Benjamin. Hold on, hold on, folks. Before, I think Trustee Johannes, go ahead. I move to nominate Adrian uh, Bouillon for area two trustee. Can you repeat your motion again? Uh, motion to uh, nominate uh, area, Adrian Bouillon to area two trustee. Okay, second. Second. Roll call, please. Student trustee Hogan. Yes. Thank you, ma'am. Student trustee Latino. Yes. Trustee Withrow? Yes. Trustee Johannes? Yes. Trustee Gonzalez Ewan? Abstain. Trustee Napoli Villariz? No. Trustee Quinlan? No. Trustee Dolphin Polk? Yes. So we are. Okay. So do we have any, uh, do we want to have any other discussion about this before we move to this process? Otherwise, I guess we have no choice but to proceed. But we do have public record, comment. This is not how I wanted it to end up. I'm just, I, I'm not going to repeat what I've said already before. I just wanted that on record. I think Lewis and I, you and I both discussed that enough. Uh, Madam President, sorry to interject, interject, but we sure. do have a public comment from the public sitting out there for Linda Handy. Would this be an appropriate time to hear public comment on this issue? Well, if it's up for discussion, it should be correct, Natasha. We are in discussion. Well, we have a failed motion on the floor now. So Natasha, would this be an appropriate time to hear public comment on this issue? Yes. Okay, let's go ahead and proceed with public comment on this issue. We have Linda Handy up first. Thank you. Okay, good afternoon, everyone. I was hoping to come in and hear that reason had taken over. Um, no matter how you dress it up, it's still putting lipstick on a pig in the sense that the community has spoken, the students have spoken, um, community groups have spoken, faculty members have spoken, elected officials have spoken, and it's fallen on deaf ears for half of the board. You're split, but the community is not split. And now to take it to games that we would be doing and, and on the schoolyard, I mean, this is a very, very serious piece. And to think that someone would dig their heels in to try and get a candidate to win that has no one speaking from the community for them, that has no ties to the community, and ignore the students. You, I don't care how many times the students keep telling you that this is sending a very bad message to them. And Cindy, you can say it five times back to them, it's not sending a message, but it is sending a message. When a student tells you I am hurt by your actions, those feelings have to be acknowledged. And that's what the job of the trustee is here. We're representing the public, we're not representing ourselves. And as for the trustees, we're representing a community, but right now I see some who are not representing their community. They're representing their own self-interest. Guys, it's it's time to stop this and unite the board. When you talk about um, agreeing with whatever happens, you're never going to agree with that. The anger is never gonna go away. The trust is not gonna be rebuilt. So I ask you guys to really think about what you're doing. 
because especially for those of you who are going to be coming up for re-election in the two months, because the community will see that this is an abuse of public funds when you could sit here and come to a decision, but instead spend a million dollars for an election. And then to leave such an important thing that really I'd implored you before I left, take it to the community, have community on that decision board. That did not happen. So we have Piedmont, we have Berkeley, we have Maxwell Park representing deep East Oakland. How do you think that looks to the people of that community? They could have easily have been added to the screening committee. And then also your screening policy. There were people who showed up for this position, judges, and they were paper screened out, attorneys, paper screened out. I keep hearing from community members that were stellar. What is going on here? So you can try to dress it up any way that you want to, but I feel that it's a power struggle that does not empower our students, our community, or this board. So I implore you to please be reasonable. Thank you. Thank you. Do we have any other speakers? Yes, President, we do. We have Nora next. Good afternoon, my name is Nona Claypool. I am a former ASLC president, vice president, treasurer, senator, and alternate senator. I served on the ASLC for a number of years back in 2016 through 18. Um, I'm a current K through 12 recruiter for the indigenous and native community at UC Berkeley. And I have worked personally with Adrian Abuyan in the community here at Peralta, and I can tell you he is deeply committed to all of things Peralta District. He would make a fine trustee, and I don't see the issue with electing him. Um, he's been a stellar part of the community. He's helped in so many ways in education, and he has such a commitment to this. And I just wanted to voice that. Thank you. Thank you. Any Next speaker or any additional speakers? Yes, President, we do. Last comment is Reverend Aisha Jordan. Good afternoon, Board of Trustees. I'm here today to ask that Adrian Abuyan fill the seat of District 2. There's been so many emails and text messages sent to me from former students that um, Adrian and I worked with when we were students here. There are so many programs that so many people um, are taking part in right now that he spearheaded. And I just feel like it would be a disservice to the community and to future Peralta students as well as current Peralta students if he was not given the opportunity to be a part of this board. So I'm just coming to just ask if you could please consider him and that's all. Have a good evening. We have no more public comments, Madam President. Okay, thank you very much. And I also want to go over once again, before we do any draw or anything like that, that the options that we're looking at is this draw and a special election, correct? And we're in an agreement that we're not going to be going to a special election, correct? Go ahead. So I believe we are not looking at a, please correct right. me if I'm wrong, we are not looking at a special election at all, because yes. as we had stated, mm -hmm. that would be fiscally irresponsible. Yep. So we're doing a draw to come up with a name to affirm an emotion, not a special election. Correct. I just wanted to make that clear. And I, I want to also make clear that we're all in agreement about moving forward with this process, correct? Yes. Affirmative. Yes. I need affirmatives, please. Thank you. Yes. Trustee yes. Ahmed? Okay. Turn it back to you, Dr. Benjamin and or Natasha. Okay. Dr. Jackson, do you have the, um, the, I'll just say bowl. I don't know, but whatever we're going to use for the drawing. I like the word vessel. That was a good one, Natasha. The vessel. <laughs> Am I okay? I'm on. Um, I just want to, for the record, um, we have a vessel. It has two similar 
um, ballots in them. I am being assisted by our student trustee, Lisa Hogan. I will ask Lisa to pull one of the ballots out and then to take that to the board president unopened so that she can make the announcement. And then we will validate that there are two different names on each of the ballots to ensure that the process is fair. So with that, I'm going to mix them up. And without looking, choose one of those. Okay, take that to President Delphine Polk. Okay, it is unopened. The name is Paulina Gonzalez Brito. Thank you very much. Do we have to take a vote on this? We do. Yes. And the other name is Adrian Abuyan. So there were two separate ballots that Thank were you. in the bowl, in the vessel. Okay, let's vote. I'm entertaining a motion. Move to approve um, Paulie <laughs> Gonzalez Brito as our trustee for area two. Second. Roll call. Student trustee Hogan? No. Student trustee Latino? No. Trustee Withrow? Yes. Trustee Johannes? Yes. Trustee Gonzalez, you On advice of council, abstain. Trustee Napoleon Valeris? Yes. Trustee Quinlan? Yes. Trustee Dolphin Polk? Yes. Motion passes. Okay. I believe that is the end of our agenda. Thank you. Let's. Doctor. Thank you so much, Dr. Benjamin. If we could put the screen back up so we could see you. Okay. You're welcome. We really appreciate you coming in and facilitating this. And whoop, I'm sorry. And with that, I believe we are adjourned. Hey, thank, thank you. you. Thank you, Dr. Benjamin. You're welcome. Uh, Madam President, I, have you adjourned the meeting officially? Yes, we are officially adjourned. Thank you thank very you much. much.